So it's that time of year when Gen Con comes around. Gen Con is a convention where fans of card games, board games, and role-playing games get together, have their fun, buy some new products, go to visit panels where their favorite developers are there to talk about pro upcoming products, answer questions, interact with the fans, have a good time. It's kind of the mecca for RPG nerds. And by that, I mean role-playing games. I do not mean rocket-propelled grenades, but those are pretty damn fun too, in my opinion. But and this one was one that kind of had me a little worried. There's been a lot of controversies in the last year, like Magic Gate with the Christine Sprankle incident, I believe her name was, a cosplayer who cried harassment and had numerous people banned, uh, falsely claiming harassment and turns out she wasn't very much of a saint herself i've heard numerous stories from people who have gone to conventions with her uh, and other cosplayers who said that she has even sabotaged costumes uh, in order to tilt competition in her favor there is the fan-led investigation the customer-led investigation into pedophiles and sexual offenders in the magic the gathering judge community and they even dragged into light some incidences of uh, sexual harassment at these Magic the Gathering events. And this incident received mainstream media attention. Uh, it even resulted in Wizards of the Coast uh, putting in place and enforcing a background check program on any and all judges. Something that is very common in other gaming communities, but for some reason was not in Magic the Gathering. You also had, you know, Comicsgate, obviously. Uh, there's been, a, so there's been a lot of controversy. There's a lot of tension in the geek world right now. And then this was all made worse by Gen Con saying that Anita Sarkeesian, who, let's be honest, is a catalyst. Let's just leave it at that. She is a catalyst for problems and for drama. Uh, that Anita Sarkeesian was going to be a guest of honor at this year's Gen Con. So I figured there were going to be problems this year. And, uh, well, this was a year where a very good friend of mine, uh, an individual who runs a blog site and uh, creates independent role-playing game products for Dungeons & Dragons, under the name Death by Mage, uh, was going to Gen Con this year as a member of the press. I was incredibly happy for him, Just wickedly uh, proud of what he has done and making a dream into reality for himself. Uh, cannot say how proud I am of him for making this happen. But I was concerned that there would be problems this year. And I won't lie uh, and say that I wasn't a little concerned for this good friend of mine who I've known for over 10 years uh, with him going to Gen Con and this really being his first uh, time going. And it turns out uh, my fears were kind of justified. Now, I thought at worst it was going to be Anita Sarkeesian yelling at another, at another panel. Unfortunately, it ended up being a lot worse. Jeremy, who runs the YouTube channels The Quartering and Unsleeved Media, on, he has runs uh, accounts on Twitter as well under the same names, was unfortunately attacked at Gen Con this year. He was jumped from behind, pummeled, uh, unaware that this attack was going to be coming, caught completely by surprise, unable to defend himself, and had to retreat when he retreated into a nearby bar the assailant punched the window in anger, breaking the window. The owner of the bar tried to convince Jeremy to not call the police and report the incident. The police didn't take it very seriously, just shrugged the whole matter off entirely. And most disturbing of all, Gen Con has tried to cover the issue up. Now, I have a very small, I guess, uh, criteria for proof, when I ask for proof, when I ask for evidence, I want at least, you know, two or three people coming in and giving their story, testimony, eyewitness reports, some videos if possible. If you have it, a copy of the police report with obviously the sensitive information blacked out, 
to show that you actually did make a police report. And Jeremy has gone above and beyond the call and provided as much information and as much evidence as he has been able to. Now, I have spoken with Jeremy on numerous occasions, and back in the early days of my channel, I actually had him on to discuss the controversies that were happening in Magic the Gathering at the time. So while I don't know him as well as I do many other people within uh, you know, these communities, while I don't know him as well as someone who is a friend in real life, I have interacted with him enough in order to get a good feel of the guy. I think he's a very honest individual. I think he has the best of intentions. I don't think that he has any nefarious intentions at all. I'm very happy with the way he conducts his business, with how he goes about reporting the news on his channels. I can't really think of any point in which I've disagreed with him uh, in regards to how he goes about these things. So I, I have a good opinion of the guy. I think he's a decent man. So it goes without saying that I was very upset when I heard that he was attacked at a convention that ultimately should be everyone getting together, having a good time, and just enjoying this hobby that we all love. Hobbies, I suppose, would be more accurate. So what I really want to do is talk about what's going on, but also the, the main intention of this video is to show where I stand on this matter and to add my opinion to the gr growing list of people who are speaking up. I think that these discussions have reached a tipping point. Tensions are running high. And obviously the debates are going to be very heated. I am certainly guilty of getting very upset when, uh, you know, a story drops. It's kind of my thing. I'm the, I act exactly the same in real life as I do on the channel. I don't sugarcoat my reactions. I don't change how I would normally respond to these actions. And it's always been my intention to be 110% just me. So I will admit, yeah, I get heated sometimes. I will shoot from the hip. It's kind of my thing. But I've always kept in mind that there's a limit. I have always wanted it to stay words. I have never once wanted it to become a physical disagreement. I have never seen a YouTuber, any of the figureheads of these communities, calling for violence. I have only seen them denounce violence. I've only seen them say, no, don't harass people. Don't take this fa too far. When a discussion gets too heated, I've only ever seen them tell people to back off. Cool your head. Go take a break. Have a cigarette. Have a drink. Go get a cup of coffee. Go pet your dog. Go bang your wife or your husband. Or go jerk off in the fucking shower. So it, it really, really I mean, gets me very upset to see that someone couldn't that someone couldn't hold their tongue that someone couldn't keep their temper in check and was riled up by all of this that's going on right now and had to beat the shit out of someone because of it. Now, Jeremy has shown that there has been damage to his person. He has shown that uh, you know his attire had been damaged in the struggle. Uh, in the videos that he has released on Twitter and on his channel, he definitely seems phased. He's either the best fucking amateur actor ever, or this happened. It's of my belief that this did happen. Jeremy has provided more than enough evidence. He has been incredibly open uh, in what has happened. His story has been consistent the entire time. And I have absolutely no reason to think that he would be lying about this. He stands to gain nothing from lying about this. If he was lying about it, all, it would, all he would gain is damage to his reputation. To his integrity. And he is an individual who has taken a lot, you know, put a lot of effort into being as honest as possible, into representing the facts as clearly as he can. <sighs> uh, this is a mess. 
The thing that also really bothers me about this is that if this was Anita Sarkeesian, if this was any woman or a person of color or anyone who wasn't heterosexual, this would have gotten national attention. It would, there would have been a statement from Gen Con the next fucking day. And we've heard nothing. There hasn't been a peep. The reverse has happened. When anyone has come in and tried to express their concerns about what has happened, when anyone came in and tried to ask for information uh, on any of the numerous message boards or stream chats that are going on in relation to Gen Con, they were silenced. Their comments were deleted or they were outright banned. The, it got bad enough that the people who running these forums started putting restrictions on who could and couldn't comment. This is absurd. Someone was just attacked at your convention. And instead, instead of releasing a statement, asking people to cool off, saying that you don't support these actions, instead you try to shut people up. That's disgusting. It's unacceptable. Now, I wanted to go to Gen Con this year, but I couldn't because I didn't have the money. I've always wanted to go. And I was planning on going next year. And now I will not be. And I will not go until this matter has been resolved. Until a statement that it has been made that, you know, apologizes for what has happened. Considering that the person who assaulted Jeremy was a vendor at the convention. Now, I understand that this did not happen on convention grounds. That it did not happen during the hours of the convention. But the fact that two atten- one attendee was assaulted. Somebody who's there as, you know, on a press pass, I believe, was assaulted by a vendor at the convention, and we hear nothing from Gen Con, knowing full and well that there could be a second attack, that there could be more violence at this convention, that this individual who committed the attack does not deserve to be there. Is a, They could very well be a danger to anyone else at that convention who they disagree with politically. Now, Jeremy has asked very respectfully that this not become a debate about politics, about Democrat versus Republican, about liberal versus conservative, about anti-SJW and SJWs. I believe his exact words were, before the attack, he had been sitting at a bar laughing his ass off with a vocal communist. And he had a good time. Because that's what he was there to do. Have fun and report on the products that were coming out in the near future. That was it. And to interact with his fans, obviously. And his supporters. But instead, he got jumped. And um, it's, it's, it's sad to see. What should have been a time where everyone gets together, forgets about the problems, forgets about the debate, and just goes in and enjoys these games that have you know, shaped our lives, that we all have a uh, shared history in enjoying, has turned this sour. I wanted to get my thoughts out on this. I wanted to show where I stand. I wanted to get, uh, you know, put my opinion out there and set the record straight. So that's really the purpose of this. If you want more information about what happened with Jeremy and uh, can, to get updates about this, uh, the place to go will be his YouTube channel, The Quartering. Uh, he tends to try and keep drama off of the Unsleeved Media channel. You can also check his Twitter profiles at The Quartering and Unsleeved Media. Again, The Quartering will likely be the page to go to to get updates about all of this. Now, I know I'm not the best about putting links in the description, but I will try to remember to do that when I upload this video in a few hours. Uh, So if I do not ride my ass on it and make sure that I do. But with that said, you know, that's my that's my that's my two cents on the matter. I am remaining respectful. I could be cussing and screaming and. You know, hollering up a storm, and I would certainly love to right now, but I am going to respect Jeremy's wishes and not 
turn, uh, you know, potentially heat this issue up any further. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I want to know your thoughts on this matter in the comment section down below. If you want to, go share your support to Jeremy at The Quartering and Unsleeved Media via Twitter or his YouTube page. Uh, go ahead, give him a follow. Uh, subscribe to his channels. He does incredible work. He is uh, very good at this. A lot better than me. So, yeah. Let me know what you think about this in the comments section down below. As I said, that's where you can find Jeremy. As always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. You can follow me on Twitter at Weaponized Rage. And until next time, guys, take it easy.